Greetings folks, in this video I'm going to be having a look at the Runcam Wi-Fi Link video receiver. Now this is a, a long anticipated uh, release of this particular piece of gear because it kind of completes the chain of connection from video camera right through to goggles. Uh, as you can see I've got them mounted up on my analogue uh, Aomway, what are they, Commander V1S goggles and uh, it connects perfectly well via HDMI. It can connect into any HDMI screen, goggles, whatever, whatever you want to use. So we can use it like conventional um, high definition FPV gear. I've made up a 3D printed mount that is just uh, double sided taped onto the top of my goggles there and there'll be a link to that to my Thingiverse page uh, in the descriptions. Uh, but you can see that just um, bolts onto the front there now, also in the box, there's the, the lovely box that we get. Uh, there will be a quick start guide, but this is a pre-release version. Uh, links card there. We also get uh, HDMI cable, HDMI mini to HDMI standard. I would really prefer that we had a mini to mini cable, but uh, they don't seem to exist, so you are going to have to get a um, an adapter of some sort and we also get a uh, power supply XD60 barrel connector which connects into the unit there and we also get a couple of linear antennas and a couple of um, left hand circular polarized antennas or pagodas they're calling them so looking at the unit it's a very nice little unit well designed it has a big fan on the front there uh, a a uh, joystick selector there and a couple of LEDs and a record button there. On the right hand side we have the power connector SD card slot there, uh, a UART port there and a, an I2C port there. On the bottom we have uh, an OTG USB-C and a normal USB-C HDMI tripod mount there and there's a little um, button in there it's a, a like a boot button or a flashing button now all these other ports here I'm not sure too sure why they are included but these things are based on uh, Redaxa single board computers so that is uh, basically a complete computer all on one board and these will be some of the other inputs into that so possibly you could use this for other uh, purposes other than just a, a video receiver but uh, the one we're interested in is the HDMI cable there. It can run on Open IPC or Ruby FPV. They're just two different firmwares and uh, just a matter of putting the firmware onto an SD card and, and changing. Same with the camera. You can change from uh, Open IPC to Ruby. According to Runcam, these will come with Ruby preloaded. This one is actually loaded with Open IPC because that's what I have on the camera. It was just easier to, to get Open IPC there. Now I have done a review of the camera and the video transmitter. Um, but just using the Wi-Fi card to connect to uh, a smartphone. Uh, but the video receiver, as I said, actually allows you to connect via HDMI to the goggles. HDMI connection gives you lower latency than the Wi-Fi card method. This can record um, full HD video as well. You can choose 720 or, or 1080. I have this set to record at 1080 60 frames a second, but there are other options as well. It has built-in Wi-Fi as well. Uh, you can turn on the Wi-Fi access point, join that access point on your computer and do some uh, setup, like changing the resolution and a few other things, changing the channel and things like that. No, not changing the channel. That's done by the, <laughs> the, the uh, selector here. You can change the uh, 5.8 gigahertz channel and the bandwidth and activate the Wi-Fi access point using the selector there. If you have OpenIPC on your camera uh, then you can use the either the network card connection or the video receiver. If you have Ruby uh, on the camera then you can only use the video receiver. You can't use the, the other method for um, operation. Alright so let's go over to the website and have a look at the um, Runcam website and uh, the little quick start guide manual as well. Here's the Runcam website. At the moment it's 159.09 Australian. Available for pre-order. Expected release date 14th of April 2025. There's the Wi-Fi link to video camera and transmitter. 
and some of the specs built-in wi-fi stable signal hdmi output built-in memory as well for you can record video straight onto the unit itself without the sd card uh, but it, i find it easier to pull the sd card out and transfer video files from the card uh, rather than starting up the wi-fi access point and having to download the video files that way up to 1080 90 or 720 120 frames a second latency 50 to 80 milliseconds they're saying range over five kilometers i've seen some other videos where people are having a lot of glitches and interference so we'll see how that goes still early days and i'm sure uh, they're still ironing out some issues as we go along HDMI out and the OTG interface allows for external network card expansion so I'm guessing that is what I was saying before just uh, the very powerful single board computer in there can be used for other things as well there we go all the different connections supports normal MSP OSD which is just your uh, INAV or Betaflight FPV uh, OSD or the Ruby OSD if you select that firmware Power input 9 to 30 volts, so that's 3 to 6S. Transmission power less than 25 dBm, that's about what 400 milliwatts. Um, but this is a receiver, so transmission, what would that be? Is that telemetry back to the radio or something like that? Or is that sort of control back to the camera or something? I'm not too sure about that. And the manual here information for Ruby or Open IPC system. We have open IPC so we won't look at the Ruby one um, and the little selector button we push to the right to change between 20 megahertz and 40 megahertz bandwidth or move up and down to change the channel and that's enough of that let's actually plug it in and see how it works all right so I have camera and video transmitter mounted up on my plane there connected into a speedy flight control board let's plug that one in Plug the HDMI in and into my screen and power into the video receiver. Might have to try that again, I think. I think you need to have the screen on before the video receiver. So that's the normal startup. Get a little bit of open IPC uh, OSD information there. And there we have the screen showing up as well. So as you can see, all the uh, MSP OSD information is there. Nice, sharp 1080p high definition. Let's turn the camera off. Start again. So now some of the setup selections. If we push the joystick to the right, we can change the bandwidth. That's setting to 40 megahertz. Push again setting to 20 megahertz and if we push up we can change the bandwidth of uh, the channel 5200 5180 and 5805 is what we need and if we push and hold to the right then it starts up the ap mode the wi-fi access point and it says connect to redaxa ground station so the redaxa ground station access point will show up if we join that one and then we open a browser and go to 192.168.4.1 and we'll get the setup screen here and we can view video files that are stored on the video receiver uh, download them we can make some changes to the ground station uh, broadcast configuration uh, we can change the wi-fi channel here and uh, bandwidth there but we can do them with the joystick as well screen mode uh, change the resolution of the screen or of the recording 
something to do with the MSP OSD there, I'm not too sure what that is, and we can change the recording frames per second there, so that's about all. Uh, oh, and we can change the GS key if we need to, but that should already be set up. Uh, you shouldn't need to do, to do that. So that's about all there is for the setup using the uh, Wi-Fi access point. So it's time to go out and go for a fly and see how it actually works in real life. So I'm starting off with some line of sight flying with the, just putting the goggles down on the ground uh, just to make sure my plane is going to fly properly, get a feel for it. The colour from the camera is a little bit browner than real life. Uh, it is fairly brown out there but it's um, that's sort of accentuating it really and it is hazy in the distance that's uh, atmospheric not the camera but that recording is looking pretty reasonable at the moment there might be a little bit of juddering partly from the plain uh, unbalanced prop but I also had to transcode the video because there are a few little glitches in it later on which we'll see that uh, messed up my video editor. It didn't want to play nicely with the video with those little uh, gaps or glitches in it so I had to transcode from H.265 to uh, a more friendly and uh, smooth video codec. The view in my uh, analog goggles is pretty good, much better than analog video for sure. Um, it was not as clear as we're seeing here, but uh, still uh, very good for analog goggles anyway. So I put in Deloitte here so I could put my goggles on and go for a bit, bit of a further flight down the coast a bit. And the sharpness and detail is, is pretty good. Probably not as good as Walk Snail. Probably the same as the 720 uh, DJI recordings, I guess. Uh, but this is 1080, 60 frames a second. There are power settings on the camera. They go from 20 to 58, whatever those units are. Uh, but I found a table in the support area of Runcan that gives you the actual milliwatts for those settings. So 20 is about 40 milliwatts and 58 is 800 milliwatts. I was on 40 here and there's the first little freeze or glitch. Uh, seemed to happen when I was banking so it's probably a bit to do with antenna orientation. I'm pretty sure we can improve the antennas on the camera maybe work out the orientation on the on the goggles as well and only really using half the power available so I will in the future try full power and uh, changing the antennas maybe to see how far I can go but uh, I was getting out to a, almost a kilometer I suppose before there are any glitches there's another one there always seems to be when I go into a bank. There are a few more freezes there and when I turn to come back there's a, a big freeze there. there that sort of destroyed my confidence in long range flying with this thing anyway. So that's out at about one kilometer. I wouldn't go any further than that. But closer to home, everything's working fine. Really nice image quality, even in my analog goggles, as I said. And they're only well, 480 pixel screens, I think.
big freeze there when we were banking to come in for a landing. So there you can see it all sitting on my head there. It uh, does add a fair bit of weight to the goggles, but it's kind of balanced with the battery out the back. Extra wires, there's the, that HDMI, HDMI cable there, which is a little bit annoying out in front, and the extra battery connection as well. I had them going via a wire lead into the uh, goggles in the, into my normal goggles battery, but it kind of balanced out okay. So I'll launch again, go for a bit more flying, and let you have a, a look for yourself at the video quality image quality pretty good really uh, apart from lack of real long range the way I had it set up uh, it's a good start and hopefully it will improve with firmware updates and uh, antenna updates and higher power maybe uh, but yeah as I said it's a good start for open source long range FPV maybe not long range yet but anyway that'll do it thanks for watching see you in the next video